DBA is designed for just-in-time manufacturing, which is the most effective way to reduce time to shipment while keeping inventory lean and efficient. With just-in-time manufacturing, you never build or purchase to long-term forecasts. Instead, all your jobs and POs are triggered by demand from sales orders. Our version of just-in-time manufacturing is called Time to Shipment MRP because it is focused on fulfilling sales orders. Time to Shipment MRP has two planning objectives, reducing time to shipment and keeping inventory lean and efficient. Let's first examine how you can reduce time to shipment. Here we are looking at top-level manufactured items for sale. Each sell item has a calculated time to shipment target, which establishes sales order required dates. The time to shipment target is dynamically calculated based on each item's order policy, which can be to order or stocking. It's calculated lead days allocation, which is the number of days planned for procuring material or making sub-assemblies before a job can be started. And it's job days allocation, which is the number of days planned for production time. Here we are looking at all manufactured items, including lower level subassemblies. A unique feature is our dynamically calculated lead days allocation, which accounts for the multi level lead times of all the components that must be made or purchased to order before a job for the item can be started. Here we are looking at the lead days inquiry for the Red Wagon in our sample company. This is a multi-level view of all the components with a two-order policy, all of which must be made or purchased to order before a job for the Red Wagon can be started. Here we see that the Red Wagon has two lower-level made-to-order subassemblies and a third-level purchase-to-order item. In this column we see each item's lead time contribution and up here is the parent item's lead days allocation which is equal to the longest lead time among the contributor components. A sell item's time to shipment target can be reduced three ways. Time to shipment can be eliminated or minimized by making the sell item to stock so that it will be available for immediate shipment. This is done by changing the item's order policy from to order to stocking. When the sell item is made to order, time to shipment can be reduced by reducing the item's job days allocation over time as you get more efficient in the shop. The job days inquiry calculates a hypothetical job days based on routing cycle times and can be used for guidance in making the job days allocation. When the sell item is made to order, a highly effective way to reduce time to shipment is to reduce the item's lead days by stocking key subassemblies and purchase components instead of making and buying them to order. For each such component, change the order policy from to order to stocking, which removes it as a lead days contributor. These common sense item settings, lead days, job days, and order policy, enable you to plan an overall time to shipment strategy they will keep you competitive in your marketplace. Your time to shipment targets can be exported and openly shared with managers, workers, buyers, salespeople, and even customers to create common goals and standards of performance. Let's now examine how time to shipment MRP can be used to keep your inventory lean and efficient. Here we are looking at an item assigned to a stocking order policy. Click the button in the Order Policy field to launch the Order Policy screen. Lean inventory is achieved using a dynamically calculated reorder point and minimum order quantity. Instead of a fixed reorder point with no logical basis, the reorder point is dynamically calculated from planned monthly demand, which we will show you momentarily, and the item's replenish time, which is calculated from the item's lead days and job days allocations. Whenever total supply minus total demand falls below the reorder point, a job or PO gets triggered, which keeps inventory lean by replenishing stock just in time to cover planned demand. The minimum order quantity establishes job or PO quantities, 
and is dynamically calculated from planned monthly demand and a planned supply days interval, which is the desired number of days between each job or PO. A shorter supply days interval keeps inventory lean with smaller and more frequent jobs or POs. The reorder point and minimum order quantity calculations are both derived from planned monthly demand, which consists of two entries, a monthly sales or usage rate, and a safety factor to cover monthly variants and prevent shortages. To help make these entries, you can view average monthly trends here to the left, or you can view actual sales or usage history in the lower panel. The dynamically calculated reorder point and minimum order quantity combine to minimize the probability of overstocking or shortages. If actual demand happens to be less than planned, the next job or PO will only be triggered when needed which achieves a stop-loss effect that caps stock on hand and minimizes overstocking. If actual demand happens to be greater than planned, the next job or PO will be triggered earlier than the planned supply days interval, which minimizes the quantity and duration of any shortage. Let's now take a look at how your item planning settings drive the manufacturing system. Unlike old-style MRP systems that are driven by long-term forecasts, with just-in-time manufacturing, all demand originates from sales orders. When you enter a sales order, the line item required date is automatically established by the item's time-to-shipment target. The MRP screen is used on a daily basis to generate jobs and POs in response to sales order demand. Each MRP session begins with job generation for CTO, custom to order items, where a one-off bomb has been generated and customized for a particular sales order. Jobs for CTO items are triggered directly from sales order lines. The job quantity is equal to the sales order quantity, and the job finish date is aligned with the sales order required date. After CTO jobs are converted, jobs are generated for standard sell items. Jobs for items with a to-order policy are triggered by demand from new sales orders, and job finish dates are aligned with sales order required dates. Jobs for items with a stocking order policy are triggered when total supply minus total demand falls below the item's reorder point. The review note capability provides a means for handling special planning requirements. Here in the MRP settings screen, a review note has been defined against this item. The review note can be used to convey special instructions. For example, there may be a maximum job size due to a machine capacity limitation. Back here in the MRP screen, the review note must be read and confirmed before job conversion is allowed. Here we are using the split job feature to split the job into two jobs. After jobs are converted for standard cell items, jobs are generated and converted one level at a time for subassembly items. Jobs converted at the current level create demand for subassemblies and materials at subsequent levels. Job finish dates are aligned with higher level job start dates. Each MRP session concludes with PO generation and conversion, which is typically handled by a buyer who confirms prices, sourcing, and other purchasing details. POs for items with a to-order policy are triggered by demand from new jobs. POs for items with a stocking order policy are triggered when total supply minus total demand falls below the item's reorder point. PO due dates are determined by each item's lead days allocation. Purchased item lead days allocations are maintained here in the MRP settings screen. The screen can be filtered by default supplier, in which case most items sourced by that supplier will be assigned the same lead days value. Lead days allocations can also be mass imported by default supplier. Unlike job conversion, which is completely automatic unless a review note calls for special handling, P 
PO conversion benefits from careful review to verify prices and sourcing. Here in the MRP screen, the buyer can change supplier selection, update supplier prices, and change manufacturer part number specifications. A review note can be used to handle special purchasing requirements, such as the need to get a price quote with each purchase order. MRP always generates the minimum quantity needed, but PO quantities can always be manually augmented to take advantage of special pricing, to fill a container, or to meet an annual volume commitment, and so on. The final phase of time to shipment MRP is the job release process, which automatically reschedules jobs when they are released to live production. A job cannot physically be started until all its subassemblies and materials are available and are not allocated to other jobs. Here in the Release Job screen, we are looking at new status jobs that have not yet been released to production. Whenever the screen is launched, a batch process allocates stock on hand of subassemblies and materials to new status jobs in plan start date order. When available is indicated in the material field, the job can safely be released to production without any risk of material shortages. When a shortage is indicated, however, job release must be delayed because materials are not fully allocated. You can drill down to the material allocation inquiry to see which components are short, which may be due to a late inbound PO or subassembly job. When a job gets released later than planned, the job is given a new finish date relative to its actual release date. This makes job scheduling self-adjusting without any need for manual intervention. Whenever a set of jobs is released, you are prompted to print job travelers. Job travelers provide workers on the shop floor with complete process documentation. In conclusion, just-in-time manufacturing is the most effective way to reduce time to shipment while keeping inventory lean and efficient. Our Time to Shipment MRP system provides the common sense item settings that drive the system and make just-in-time manufacturing possible for any type of small manufacturing business.